Many independent watch repairers are hoarders. We never seem to want to throw anything away. In order to provide quality repairs, a watch repairer will usually replace any worn, broken or corroded parts as a matter of course. This is often non-negotiable. A watch repairer will be striving to achieve the highest possible level of performance from the watch movement once the work is complete. And if the owner of the watch is prepared to pay for this level of service, well then that obligation is clear. But what happens to those parts which have been replaced? Well, really they should be discarded, never to be placed in a watch movement again. Surely it would be sacrilege to use them in any meaningful way. This goes against the grain. We need spotless, brand new parts when servicing watches. End of story. I don't throw them away. I'm one of those hoarders. Usually, unless a part is completely beyond use, I'll keep it, just in case. I was doing some cleanup and organization recently and found a few boxes of Valju 7750 parts. I remembered some of the parts were from a rusted Breitling, others were from another repair job where most of the movement was replaced due to poor previous work, and I guess others were from random jobs here and there. There are so many parts, I wondered if there'd be enough to make a full movement out of them. I had some new parts in packets too in my parts drawer and I started to think that it might make a fun project to see if I could clean up the old scrap bits and bobs and see what happens. I very much doubt that the movement would even work, yet alone keep good time. I mean, these parts were in the scrap drawer for a reason, right? They're junk. Oh well, why not? Let's just give it a go. The first thing to do is sort through all the parts and choose the cleanest parts, which will give the highest chances of success. And as you can see, I've spread all the parts out on my bench, and they're filthy. Some are corroded, others dirty, and some are new old stock. It looks like I might have everything, but let's find out. I'll start by selecting an escape wheel. The second wheel, this has a long lower pivot. The third wheel, noticeable with its large stubby pinion and its extended arbor. And the great wheel. Now I look for some pallets and I choose the best of the bunch. The pallet cock the stop lever, the crown wheel, I have a crown wheel core, it's a little bit corroded but doesn't look too bad. Now of course I need a barrel in the mainspring. And a ratchet wheel. And now I can select my winding pinion. And now I can select my sliding pinion. I need a yoke spring. And a winding stem. The setting lever. And a yoke. This part is called a rocking bar. The setting wheel. The intermediate setting wheel.
and the setting lever spring. This is part of the chronograph, the minute counter spring. Luckily, I have a balance assembly with an Etacron system. A driver can opinion. The ratchet wheel driving wheel. The chronograph cam. The hammer cam jumper. The switch. The chronograph bridge. The 60 seconds oscillating pinion. The chronograph wheel friction spring. The minute counter driving wheel. The operating lever. The two function lock. Now it looks like this chronograph wheel is beyond cleanup. The top pivot and the cam are both corroded beyond salvage. I do not have a second option, so I'm just going to have to order a new one. My initial plan for this challenge was to only use parts from my stock, but I guess I have no choice. I need to spend some money. On the bright side, this reduction wheel looks okay. And this clutch looks clean as new. I don't recommend reusing reversing wheels. These are usually quite fast wearing in 7750s, 2892s, 2824s and their variants and it's recommended to replace them even if they look okay, but not today. This looks okay, I'm using it. I have a new in packet minute counting wheel, so I'm going to use that. This is the automatic device bridge. It looks pretty much perfect, but I'm not going to use it. I'll explain later. Now I need a free cannon pinion. An intermediate calendar driving wheel. A minute wheel. The day and date driving wheels. I have a couple of hour counting wheels, both not amazing. I'll just choose the cleanest.
I need a chronograph hammer. An hour hammer. The hour counter lock. Our hammer operating lever. And the hour hammer spring. I have only one date platform and it's not perfect, but we can work with it. I will need both day and date jumpers. The date jumper is a little bit corroded, but I only have one. The jumper spring. And the date jumper maintaining plate. The double corrector. The date indicator maintaining plate. The chronograph hammer spring. The clutch spring. The hour wheel. And this retains the day disc. I have a new day disc in this packet. And I have a date disc. Well, this is all looking positive so far. I have most of the parts, but looks like I will need to order a chronograph wheel. I also noted I do not have a screw for the balance assembly, but I'm sure I can make one. I'm just going to clean up a bit and then we'll take a look at the main plates. almost forgot the oscillating weight. And these are non-salvageable. They're going in the bin. So I'm left with two main plates and two barrel and train wheel bridges. The most rusted ones have a nice galosh pattern, so if possible, I want to use those. I don't hold much hope, but I'm going to try. I'm going to soak all the rusted parts in this rust remover made by WD-40. I've used this before and it's quite effective. I soak the parts for about an hour. As you can see, I also have another automatic device bridge in the rust remover with a nice pattern. It's quite rusty. The brass post is broken and the old rotor ball race is rusted solid in place. But I want it, so I'm going to try and salvage it.
I can't get those rusted screws to move, and I don't want to push my luck with the rust remover damaging the plating, so I'll try a good old dose of WD-40. In the meantime, I have many more parts to de-rust and clean. I soaked these overnight and now I'm going to try and clean them further. I managed to remove the rusted ball race. The post is broken and the center jewel and post was beyond repair. I can replace them from the other bridge later. The main plate is a different story. I really don't hold much hope with this one. And as I suspected, the screws are just way too rusted and are really locked into place. I suppose I could use a stronger acid to dissolve them, but the plating would possibly get damaged and there are quite a few steel posts embedded in the plate and these would also get damaged. No, I'm going to have to use the other plate. But this plate has its own problems. The reason I have it is because it was replaced after I observed this scoring under the balance cock caused by a watch repairer who was overly enthusiastic with their graver. No doubt they were attempting to resolve a timing issue and made a damn ugly job of it. It ended up in my care and I just decided to replace the whole thing. But it looks like I have no choice, I've got to use it. I will be honest, at this point my hopes were slipping in regards to making this movement function as a good timekeeper. Although I was fairly confident by now that we had a working movement, potentially, I was not confident at all that it would be accurate in the least. But I am like a dog with a bone sometimes, so I just carried on. I started with the automatic device bridge and as you may remember I wanted to use the patent one and fix it with the parts from the bland version that I have. Using my staking tool I removed the reduction wheel post and the center wheel jeweled screw post. I removed the broken reduction wheel post. 
and then I replaced it with the good one. And finally, I pressed in the jeweled screw post. Now with that done, I noticed one of the jewel bearings was missing from my main plate. I have one in the other plate, so I can use that. Using my jeweling press, I removed the jewel that I needed. And I pressed it into my main plate. And these jewels are friction fitted. Now these divots are really, really ugly. I can't make that ugliness go away, but I will smooth them over and remove the burrs so that the balance cock will sit flat when I eventually fit it. I know that the divots were made for a reason, usually a lazy way to adjust balance end shake. I've done it myself with some cheap movements. I'm pretty sure that the reason this was done will become apparent to me later though. We shall see. But for now, I'm smoothing them away as best I can. I mentioned that I did not have a screw for the balance cock, so I made one off camera. This is just a bit of blue pivot steel, which I turned down on the lathe and I made a thread. I'll part it off and make a slot. But for now, I can assemble the movement. I have cleaned all the parts. My strategy is now to assemble and lubricate the movement quickly to see if A, it works, and B, if it does work, what preliminary performance I may get out of it. Now, if we get a good result, I can strip it down, clean and lubricate it again with much greater attention to detail. So sorry if the parts are not yet 100% clean. This is a preliminary rebuild. Please don't judge. And I'm starting with the mainspring, the barrel and train wheels. and I fit the train wheel bridge. Now I fit the keyless works. And I can fit the escapement, and we'll see what gremlins we may have with the timekeeping. Well, it's ticking. That's positive, I guess. I'm now testing the movement with my timing software and I can see that it does not look good. Between every tick and talk, there's a lot of noise indicating a definite problem to deal with. I'm not concerned with the rate at this time, 
But further evidence of an issue, as if we needed it, is indicated here by this rather low amplitude. First thing to check is the balance spring. Is it straight? And if not, is it rubbing on either the balance wheel or the balance cock? And I can see that it's not completely flat. It seems to be pivoted up at the stud. But I can also see that it is not actually touching with the balance wheel or cock. And so I don't think that's the issue. But I've straightened it up and I've placed it back on the timer. And indeed the results were the same. What was a problem though, was the lower Inca block setting. To me it looked out of sorts. It's possible the balance staff was not sitting parallel in the dual hole as a result. And this may explain the divots on the main plate, the previous repairer attempting to compensate for the problem. I'm not sure, but I'm going to replace the setting and we'll see if it makes a difference. And well, yes, that made a remarkable difference. As you can see, the noise between the beats is negligible and the amplitude is vastly improved as a result. I've played with the rate and it seems a lot better. It's not an incredibly clean reading, but it's heading in the right direction. Let's move on and continue with the chronograph parts. You probably already spotted it, but I had a big camera lens in my way. I still have a rusted screw embedded in this post. I'll have to disassemble again and replace the screw post. And with the magic of video that's done, I can continue. And here we go again. Like a complete idiot, I failed to notice that the screw post was missing here. I'll have to strip it down yet again, replace it, and I'll be back in a moment. Those screw seatings look really rough under this magnification, but under the naked eye, it's hardly noticeable.
Now I'm ready to try the dial and hands for size and try it in the case. And speaking of the case, dial and hands, I didn't have these on hand, but I managed to find this listing of a 1970s new old stock case from a seller in Switzerland. The dial is a little bit bland, but the case looked absolutely amazing to me, so I purchased it. I understand that the case is original from the 1970s, with the standard screw back being replaced for a display back, Seemed like a bargain at 115 US dollars. And here we can see another Muppet mistake. I don't know why, but I had it fixed in my head that the dial I'd purchased was a date only version. And clearly when I first selected my parts, I had selected the day calendar parts, but when it came to assembly, I did not fit them, thinking my dial was date only. Now I have to strip down the calendar and place the parts correctly. It must be nearly time for scotch, surely. Now the case is really nice, uh, but I had a small problem in that the reset pusher is not quite long enough. If I start and stop the chronograph, I should be able to reset the chrono to zero, but the lever is not being pressed deep enough to push the cam. I took out the pusher screw in order to strategize. I have two choices, either to make a longer screw, which is what I would normally do, but in this case I can see that the screw cavity is quite deeply recessed, and so I have an opportunity to simply create a sleeve in order to effectively extend the length of the screw. I faced off some pivot steel in my lathe, And then I drilled a hole deep enough and with a diameter so that it slides over the pusher screw head. I made it slightly longer than I needed it and I parted it off and then cleaned up the other end.
and now this can be fitted over the screw and will be held secure by the operating arm in the watch. And this effectively makes the screw longer in a non-destructive way. And now I can cut the stem to size and fit the crown supplied with the case. And finally, I can fit the oscillating weight and finish with the casing up process. And I think it looks rather good. The case to me actually looks quite amazing. The dial is less than amazing and I may change it in the future, but for now I need to strip this watch to pieces again and really give it my attention. And that's it. Thank you for making it this far and thank you for watching in the first place. The Watch Repair channel is just a cat's whisker away from 100,000 subscribers, which seems crazy to me, but I want to thank everybody who supported me and the channel until now. You guys are awesome. But if you're not subscribed, it's free. Just click the subscribe button below and the bell icon, which appears next to it, and you'll be informed whenever I publish new content. And this video was made possible with the support and the assistance from my patrons, and I want to thank you all very, very much. See you next time.